It is again that time, another time, for an outing across Lincoln, watching trains across the BNSF system, once again with Owen. And this trip started off with some BNSF coal trains on the St. Joe's subdivision, with some new GE power still shining. This crossing's taking a while. There we go. <laughs> Look, listen, live. Okay, it'll live. Good, good. After these coal trains passed, we headed downtown and over Hobson Yard, which even for a weekday was surprisingly quiet. The only things we saw were a tanker train, a distant SD-45, and an empty coal train with a smoky AC-44. We were headed downtown on this day to catch a Union Pacific local which was going to come in soon, and while waiting for this, we saw the tanker train depart Hobson with a long journey ahead of it as it was destined for California. We left to catch the local before seeing the rest of this train, but I did catch a photo of the DPUs, one of which was number 603, a former Santa Fe-9 that was rebuilt into an AC-44C4M, very similar to Norfolk Southern's venture, although BNSF did it on a much smaller scale, as this is the only one of these units that I've seen. But not long after this train passed came the local that we were waiting for.
Oh yeah, and it was led by 1979. I'm not a big fan of this unit, so it wasn't really a big deal that I caught it, but the train itself was cool, and the crew was nice too. After the local passed, we headed back into Hobson Yard to see if there was anything else of interest, and despite it being quiet, there were a few more interesting things. Off in the distance was a line of locomotives in storage. Most of these were Jeeps, even though there are a few Heritage Ones in there, and there was also an Executive Mac in the mix. But a lot more closer to the foreground was another empty coal train with my first ever Montana Railink SD70, number 4309. Ever since BNSF acquired the MRL, these engines have been all over the system, and by this point, many have passed through Lincoln. We went back down to 1st Street to see what other trains could be found at this time of day, and we did see a switching move working around Hobson Yard, with some interesting rolling stock. These covered hoppers with the paw prints carry, get this, kitty litter. So to any of you cat owners out there, if you've bought kitty litter from the pet store, there's a chance it might have come on one of these rail cars. You're welcome. We are currently in the back rooms, <laughs> in a liminal space. This is fun. And this train was being pulled by the same SD45 that we saw from a distance earlier. Nice to see these locomotives still running, although this one has been converted to remote control like many switching units have. Besides the SD45 switching around, there wasn't much else going on besides this high rail truck and a few light engine moves. Not much else besides that. And the last train of the day would be a parked double stack train, which was waiting to head into the yard. And that was about it for this day. Not very much, not the most active day we've had, but still quite successful and still a pretty nice day. We caught some trains, caught some things I hadn't seen before, and therefore it was a success in my books. So, I know this was a bit more of a shorter rail fending video, but thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and God bless. And thanks, Owen, for taking me out on another one of these trips.